good old boy and he loves good common people. If you need advice, he's ready, willing, and able. He knows the law and he knows the truth and he knows what's right for me and you. He gets the job done. That's Eric C. Cobb. If you lived in eastern Kentucky from the 90s to 2010, you'll recognize his face, whether you wanted to or not. With his face plastered on billboards, ridiculous commercials, and radio advertisements that played four times in a row, you know that if you wanted to get the job done, you called Eric C. Kahn. What might have been one of the biggest government frauds in U.S. history, Kahn's small-town disability law complex scammed over an estimated $550 million to get people on Social Security insurance, costing the government $2.6 billion of fraudulent money. Born in Pikeville, Kentucky, Eric was born into a family of law. After graduating high school, he decided to join the military, only to quit to get his Juris Doctor's degree. Starting his new career in 1987, Khan bought a single wide trailer for his office right in front of his mother's home. After gaining popularity in the area for his flamboyant nature, Judge Dave Dodery came to Khan for a deal. He would approve of all of his SSI cases if he got some money in return. Inside the court, Dottery would take cases, some assigned to other judges, and approved them if they had Khan's name listed on them. Gaining this much popularity, Khan hired multiple doctors, including Dr. Alfred Atkins and Frederick Huffnagel. Before Khan hired him, Huffnagel actually was sued so many times that his medical license was revoked, except in Kentucky. Meanwhile, Khan was living his life to his full extent. He was going on vacation for a full week once a month to different countries, extreme parties that everyone had a tell of, and marrying 16, possibly 17 times. His business was booming, and what helped was his marketing. Everywhere you went, there was a billboard. Some even had mannequins. These mannequins popped up on the news because people would call 911 thinking it was someone sitting on top of the billboard. His commercials were just as extravagant. He had one where he compared doctors to chimpanzees, whom he called whore doctors. Another one was a music video parodying I Am a Man of Cosmic Sorrow, featuring Jessica White, the Obama Girl, and bluegrass legend Ralph Stanley. And a third one played off a James Bond film. So, I got a question for you. When it comes to your social security and disability, whom do you trust? When Eric C. Khan represents you, there will be no fear. Eric, we need you back. I never left. Khan had no idea that someone in the Wall Street Journal was investigating the approval rates of Judge Daugherty. In 2011, Damien Paletta released his article exposing them at the same time the government cracked down on the Social Security Office in West Virginia. Khan then decided the best option was to burn every file that Daugherty's name was on. In 2013, the hearing occurred with incriminating evidence from Khan's in the SSI office on him, Judge Daugherty, and Dr. Atkins. This hearing was actually conducted during a government shutdown, the first time in U.S. history for this to happen, meaning everyone present did it for free, but no charges were officially placed. Khan then decided to take a vacation to Ecuador, where he was thinking of moving to escape charges. He got distracted when he found his 16th, possibly 17th wife. Shortly after he returned, he was arrested in his office, with police vehicles following the parking lot and showed her. He decided to plead guilty to cause less stress on his mother, then released on house incarceration. He was to serve 12 years in prison. His assistant and security guard, Curtis White, got the idea of being raped by gangs in prison into Khan's head. Khan was terrified of this happening, so when he traveled to Lexington to cooperate with the government for Atkins' trial, he cut off his ankle tracker, dumped it off on I-75, and drove off. People made bets and fundraisers on where Eric went, including a theory of a hidden bunker underneath the Abraham Lincoln statue he had commissioned for the parking lot of his complex. Meanwhile, he was actually crossing the border of Mexico with a dog he named Curly, which he used to get past security. He slowly made his way to Honduras, where riots were happening against the recent rigged presidential election. 
One of the only reasons he got caught was the amount of contact Khan made with others. He emailed the Lexington Herald leader a bargain to surrender if they made his sentence shorter and if they removed his mugshot, since it was unflattering. He also emailed them a 42-page letter about his life, which was nicknamed his manifesto. They finally tracked him down from sighted witnesses to one of two Italian restaurants in the country, Pizza Hut. Khan simply responded to being caught with, Can I finish my food first? On September 8, 2018, Eric C. Khan was sentenced to 27 years in prison. Though the story is extremely odd and somewhat comical, more than 1,800 people lost their SSI in 2015 with no help from the government to get it back. Now, 1,000 of them got their benefits back, while others have committed suicide or died because they have no money for medical bills. People to this day who need insurance are struggling because of the man who learned Spanish from a tape. For CVM 320, I'm Christy Hall.